Good. 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 Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome, welcome. Everybody who's on, you can turn your cameras on if you want to. I want you to drop in the chat where you're tuning in from. Drop in the chat where you're tuning in from. Let's see what we got. We got Charlene in New York. We got iPhone, AKA Ashley in Louisiana. We got Claire in Florida. We got Michelle in South Carolina, along with Mr. BJ who who is in South Carolina with me? Keisha from Charlotte is on. Okay. So tonight we're going to be talking about your marriage and fertility. And we have a special guest who I um, kind of just want to let her flow because that's what she does. <laughs> uh, and I wanted to introduce to everyone and reintroduce to some sorry my hat is just throwing me off it looks like super crooked um uh reintroduce to some and introduce to others miss coach keisha smith um she is one of the hosts along with her husband um pablo smith and they have a radio show called this, this is how we do it. We do it. And so um, they talked a lot about different issues in marriage. Yes, I am recording this, Ashley. Um, they talk about different issues. Well, let me just make sure it's because you said that. Okay, yeah. And so they talk about different issues in marriage. And so, um, and just have given me so much insight into my personal, you know, life and my marriage. And so some of the things that she shared, I thought were so good that on this um, journey, we need to make sure that we are continuing to strengthen our marriages. And because you can get so overwhelming when all you're thinking about is trying to have a baby, when all you're thinking about is the baby that you don't have, when you're all you're thinking about is like, I don't even want to touch this guy, except when it's time to have sex to get pregnant and other than that we ain't even talking or things are going issues are going on and so and then sometimes we as women take all the blame for everything that's happening in our bodies and don't actually talk to our husbands about the part uh, that we want them to play in this whole process and um, not really communicating our feelings and so one of the biggest things um, that I wanted her to touch on tonight is to remind everyone about how to be successful in communicating with your, hold on, I'm going to I think that's, that's me, Michelle. Michelle, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, yeah, that right, was me. Right, I was right. trying to get on my computer. Sorry about that. Oh, you're fine. And so um, making sure that we are communicating with them and letting them know what we need from them, um, how to support each other, and just having that line of communication open both ways. So again, I'm going to go ahead. Keisha, are you ready? I am ready. I am. I'm always ready to talk about this subject. So okay, excited. Me, oh, wait, where you go? Okay, there you go. All right. So let me put my video. I'm sorry. I just switched over. Okay, there I am. Hi, everybody. Let me, I'm trying to figure out why it won't let me pin you. Right. Wow. 
Right. Okay. All right. Sorry, I'm having some uh, technical difficulties here. Let me let me see if I can get on. All right. Go ahead. Keisha is going to go ahead and take the floor. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Listen, ladies. I am super excited to be in your presence. I am honored and I thank you for just taking the time to just listen to me. I don't take it for right. granted because you can be in so many different places doing so many different things, but um, I am thankful. I'm always thankful when somebody has the opportunity to hear my voice and, um, and gain a little bit, if anything, out of what I say, um, but I am super excited. So I do want to start off saying thank you. Um, thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your fertility journey, um, because I know it's not one that you speak openly about to everybody, and I know it's something that's that's very dear to your heart. Um, so again, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, but I do want to say, first of all, I introduce myself a little bit. My name is Coach Keisha Smith. I am the founder and CEO of Doing Life with Keisha, um, which is a life coaching business that focuses on generational trauma. Um, again, like Michelle said, my husband and I, we host a radio show, which is called This Is How We Do It. And we basically talk about our marriage. We talk about what we have been through through the 23 years. I know, I know I look so good. I'm so cute, but yes. I have been married 23 years. I've been with um, Pablo for 33 years. We are high school sweethearts. Um, and we have four, excuse me, I'm talking about four. Oh God, no. We have two boys, um, which are 21 and 16, Elijah and Ethan. Um, but we did not get here um, easy. So I want to go ahead and tell you that this journey has not been easy. Um, can I say it has been worth it every day? No. Have I, did I, would I want to say that I wanted to quit? Absolutely, yes. Um, do I want to say that um, I could have divorced him years ago? Heck yeah. But uh, we decided to stick it through because we found a formula that works for us. So I just wanted to share this formula with you ladies because we found out that communicating, um, putting our own desires to the side a little bit, and allowing each other to have their own individual personalities and own individual self has allowed our marriage to just flourish. So um, I can, I'm just gonna start out a little bit about at the beginning of our marriage. Um, of course, it was all peaches and cream. Oh, I love you so much. Oh, when you come to the door, your food is waiting for you. Just like, you know, um, what is that guy? Um, Soon as I get home from work, I pay your rent. He was telling me all that stuff. It was so good. You know, and then, you know, um, life started happening. Bills started happening. Um, children started happening. Stress started happening. In-laws started happening. Things started happening. And um, so with them happening, Pablo and I, we found our place. And we found ourselves in a place that was very uncomfortable, a very selfish place. We found ourselves um, not wanting to be together, not communicating, not having sex, um, not even really wanting to look at each other. I think that in our earlier years, we stayed because of the kids. And that is where I want you as ladies to not get into. Um, but we found out simple, it was we were not communicating. Um, so what we decided to do was, and this was not like early on in our years, we just kind of rolled through it. You know, we let, um, we got into the church again, the church was amazing, but then we got into church bondage. It was like everything surrounded the church, whatever the church said, whatever the pastor said, whatever anybody told us, we took them and what they're said as gold nuggets and try to implement it into our marriage. I'm going to tell you that was one of the worst things that we ever done. We decided once we got a little bit common sense and once we decided we wanted to make our marriage work for us, we just started to we decided to do things our way. Doing things in our way, we had to drop a lot of people. Um, we had to dig into ourselves and figure out why do we do things? Why will we, you know, why will we act in certain ways? Why do we 
just adjust to what people said. So then we, we realized that we had a lot of generational trauma. Generational trauma is when something happens in your life that causes you to freeze. And at times you don't even know that you're stuck in a place, but you look up and you're doing the same exact things and it's destroying you as a person. It can destroy your relationship and it can destroy everybody around you. So um, we decided that we were going to handle and tackle these generational traumas. So uh, with both of us, we realized that, you know, alcoholism, drugs, um, sex, um, you know, running away, abandonment, a lot of those things were the generational traumas that we dealt with, which in turn, we brought those things into our marriage. So that's why we were so quick to want to quit on each other. We never gave each other the opportunity to talk. We assumed a lot of things about each other. And that's one of the worst things that you can do um, when it comes, sorry, this light is bothering me. When it comes to um, people in general is that you just assume things that are, that's not even true about a situation, a circumstance, or even you know the person that you're with. So we assumed the negative all the time. So um, through that transition, we had to figure out if we're gonna actually deal with this trauma or we're gonna take this trauma to the next relationship because whether Pablo and I made it or not as a married couple, if we didn't deal with this trauma, we was gonna take it to another relationship. So thankfully by the grace of God and his love for us and his grace and mercy, he helped us deal with this generational trauma. Um, so, sorry, I thought I turned this light out. Okay, he helped us, he helped us deal with this generational trauma. Um, so we dealt with it. It was very hard because we was raising kids. We were working full time. We were parents. We were daughters. We were um, husband and wives. And we're trying to deal with individual um, trauma that we both dealt with. So, of course, we went to some counseling. We um, talked a lot. Um, we actually got mad at each other a lot. We actually even was on the verge of getting a divorce, actually dealing through this generation of trauma because it was just so deep um, in our lives. Um, but again, through God's grace and mercy, we worked it out and we talked about it. And so now uh, with our radio show and 23 years of marriage, we're actually sharing a lot of what happened in our marriage and how we decided to do it our way. The key word I want you ladies to understand is doing it your way when it comes to your marriage. Um, because you actually gain, whether it's good or bad um, ideas about your marriage from your parents, from your friends, from um, anybody that maybe have a, may have a marriage that you idolize or you think that, you know, when they go home that, you know, they are loving on each other every night and, you know, they got roses in the bed and all that. Literally, there are some couples that do that, but probably 99% of them do not do that. So um, our whole goal with our radio show and with our life coaching businesses is to help you Break those generational traumas first, because if you can break those generational traumas, you can love who you are as a person. Then if you can love who you are as a person, you can effectively communicate to people. Because when you can't communicate how you feel, if you can't listen to somebody to tell you how they feel about you, if you can't handle criticism, if you can't handle your spouse telling you, I don't like when you do this, or I wish you would stop doing that. Then if you have issues in that area, then you have to deal with that because that means that you're, you're, you're offensive. You're taking on offense. And once you take on offense, you cannot move forward in any type of journey. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's fertility. I don't care if it's overcoming abandonment. I don't care if you're trying to stop drinking or smoking if you can't overcome getting offended you're going to have a hard time dealing with any journey that you are a part of so Keisha um, yes. coach Keisha 
Can yes, you ma'am. can you give them a few things that they can like something that they can take away and do like this week? What are some things they can do to um, nurture conversations that maybe they haven't had with their spouses yet, or if they're having a hard time um, pulling them in to um, understand the difficultness of their fertility journey, maybe they haven't shared, or maybe they're just not having conversations. Can you give them some takeaways or some things that they could practically do like within the next seven days um, yes. to nurture those conversations in their marriages? Yes. So one of my biggest things, and Michelle, I've shared it with you. One of my biggest things is having a weekly conversation with your spouse. What I mean is Pablo and I, we meet, we have a meeting every Monday at 12 o'clock. It's like a scheduled meeting. So in that meeting, we'll talk about some of the things that, you know, meant more to us. Like I, like my whole thing is, you know, with my husband, you know, I need more intimacy. And for him, he needs me to be more compassionate towards him. So we talk about those things, but the key thing is just not talking about it. We do takeaways. So what that means is we say, okay, this is what I need from you. I need you to do, I need you to be A, B, or C. And we try to minimize it to maybe one or two things because when you overwhelm people with something that they're, they maybe have a difficulty with, then when you overwhelm them, you're not giving them a chance to win. So we usually do one or two things. Um, and I try to leave it to maybe one thing, especially when I'm dealing with my husband. I don't like to overwhelm. Overwhelming men, it, it doesn't work because they're always out to win. And if they feel like they didn't win, if you give them two tasks and they feel like they didn't win the both tasks, they didn't win at all. So, you know, I try to give them one thing and then we'll talk about it. And then we'll like, okay, so during the week, you have this opportunity to do this or we can work on this. And then the next Monday when we talk, we say, okay, now, did you do that? How did you feel like, did you, you know, do you feel like you did what I asked you to do? He'll say yes or no, then we'll talk about it. But we do not move off of that subject until it has been accomplished. Because how can you move off of a subject and it has not been accomplished and move to the next thing? I'm sorry, I hit my video. And, and move to the next thing, you can. You have to have a win in order for you to be able to move to the next section or to the next thing. So I would challenge you women for the next seven days, schedule appointments with your husbands and say, listen, I, you have an opportunity to tell me this. And that's where, when I was talking about it, getting offended, you have to be okay if your husband tells you, I don't like when you don't do this, or you don't give me enough of that. Because if you don't give them enough of that, that can interfere with your sex life. Because nowadays, your husband is just not wanting to have sex with you. He's wanted to make love to you. He's wanted to be intimate with you. He just don't want to just bam, 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 and then we, we're done. That's back in high school. This man wants to nurture your soul and he wants to make, make you feel fulfilled. But if he's not being fulfilled and you are, how can you make it to the next level in your marriage and especially in your fertility journey? So I would definitely say, do scheduled meeting, do a scheduled meeting with your husband, talk about one or two things that you're needing and let him tell you the things that he needs from you and then have a follow-up session the next week. Okay, so did y'all hear that? She said one or two things, <laughs> not six or seven. So a good thing, a good example of that is you say you want your, okay, Keisha, how can Coach Keisha please tell the women, or if you have any tips on this, mm -hmm. um, all right, you don't want to make somebody be something they're not, of course. But mm -hmm. in this particular journey, some of the takeaways that I give my clients are having them to pray or read declarations with their spouse over their bodies in regards to the fertility. If that's not something that he's doing or he doesn't lead well in that area, can you think of any ways where they can bring that up to um, 
help it be something that they can uh, understand how important it is to them? Or do you have any perspective on if you should be asking them, if it's something that they don't feel comfortable with, or how can you help or encourage your, your partner, your husband to do something with you that maybe they don't recognize as important currently? Okay, so first thing, Michelle, we have to understand that our husbands may not be as spiritual as we are, first of all. Second of all, you have to understand that men do not understand infertility, not as much as women do. Because most of the time, when, a, when, it, when it comes to infertility, it's mainly, men think it's mainly the women, especially if they've had other babies or they have other, you know, they, they've had children, they don't see it as it can be them that can be the issue because the, the world has made the men feel like, Oh, you can have as many babies as you want. Nothing's wrong with you. You know, it's probably the women. So, and then men have a hard time when they feel like they can't fulfill their, their wives. So when I mean by that, if, if a man feels like I can't give you a baby, then he don't want to think about it anymore because he can't fix it. If he can't fix it on his own, then it's, he, he don't want to have anything to do with his hands off of it because men were designed to fix. They were designed to take care of their wives. They were designed to make sure everything works like it should be. So when, and they're fixers and when they can't fix it, they take their hands off of it. And it's like their, their whole body and their soul and their spirit is wounded because they, they feel less of a man. So what I would suggest is in the, in that meeting that you're going to have, you as the woman take the lead. Don't, don't make him feel like he has to always take the lead. You take the lead. And what you can do is, okay, bae, we're gonna, before, we, before we talk, let's pray. Boom. Before we talk, bae, let's pray. Grab hands. Make him help, put his hand on your stomach. Maybe you put his hand on his back, but he don't realize that. And, and you speak life. You speak the life because what you're doing is you're teaching him how to pour into you. Because most of the times they don't know how to do it. They really don't. And it's not that they don't want to. They don't know how to. And when they don't know how to do something, again, men pull back because they're the fixers. So if you decide to do these meetings or you decide to do these scheduled meetings, you take the lead initially. It's fine. I don't see anything wrong. If you and your husband are one, it doesn't matter if you're leading or if he's leading. What happened is, you're getting into the bondage of the church said, or people said the man's supposed to lead. So if he don't lead, it's not going to happen. That's not necessarily true. You are a, you are a believer as well. God hears your prayers just like he hears his. So take the lead initially, let him get comfortable with what's happening. And then you will look up and then he will start leading because he's comfortable and you have made him feel comfortable in this journey. Does that make sense? I think that is such um, a great point. And I think you freed some people right there because so many times, um, sometimes as women who are in the church, you think less of your husband if he's not this home by that yeah, and he like okay. Everybody, husband ain't laying hands and laying them out at home. Right, <laughs> right, Everybody right. Going to be and, that not there. That's not every man. And it's so, not every man. Especially, you should know your husband. You know if he's going to be that way or not. You exactly. know if he's more laid back and if if you like uh, Coach Keisha said, show him what you need. And so that is yes. so good show him how to pour into you. So if you begin saying the declarations and you hold your stomach and you hold him and he's like, oh, okay, this is what she needs. Like you can literally tell him, but showing him is just even better. So Absolutely. I think it's so good to, to you start off showing him what you need by actually mm -hmm. doing it. And then you can always communicate that like, hey, you remember the way I prayed that um, the other morning? Um, do you want to try to do it tomorrow? Maybe, you know, something like that. Or do you want to do it next week? Like just making it real like casual and not, and not like she said, forcing him to feel like the fixer. Yeah. So yeah, Joy said, wow, I never thought about the pressure that's placed on him. Yeah. Because 
when he feels like he can't do anything, like she said, men are natural fixers. When they feel like they yep. can't do anything, sometimes they just feel like they don't want to have anything to do with it because they feel like there's nothing they can do. Mm -hmm. But what they don't know is the emotional toll that you have on you, even though what you're going through is very painful and, and them praying over you is not going to make it pain free, but it can help. Yeah. So um, you have to let them know, man, it feels. And then once they do it, praise him, boost him up and make sure he knows. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Like, I felt God when you were praying, man, I'm so excited that you were praying that and make sure he knows that you appreciate mm -hmm. it and what it felt like to you. Because to him, he's like, I don't want to read these little prayers that you yep. go like, you yep. know, you need to make sure that you um, let him know that once he has done something, you asked um, or something that you suggested that you really appreciate it um, and that um, yeah. it was effective in helping because yeah. that makes him know, OK, well, I did do something. Yeah. And, so, and okay. you don't and you don't want to get into witchcraft and manipulation. When you force somebody to do something that they don't want to do, you you begin to manipulate them. You don't want to do that because it never wins. You'll never, it'll never happen. So that's why, like you said, Michelle, when you praise and bay, that was so good because what they hear is the pastor, um, whoever, who, whatever man can bring down heaven or whatever the case may be, that's what they hear. And especially if you in church and you're like, oh my God, pastor preaches great message. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So he's now comparing himself to the pastor. And so what you have to do is you have to take and eradicate that whole thought out of his mind and let him know you are the shepherd of our household. And until you learn how to do it, we going to do it together until you feel comfortable doing it. I mean, there was so many times and so many years, Michelle, Coach uh, Michelle, where Pablo never prayed. Pablo, he would not pray, but he, I didn't, okay, let me stop, let me stop, stop, stop. Mm -hmm. Not that he would never pray. He would never pray in front of me, but he would pray on his own. But because he didn't think that he can pray right, like he didn't think he put the words together or he didn't think, you know, the syllables match. He thought that I was thinking, oh my God, you can't pray. When it's the simplest prayer that causes God to move because your heart is right. And that's what you want your husbands to understand that as long as his heart is right, this prayer is going to manifest and God's going to move because God knows that his heart is right and that there's no manipulation. There's no witchcraft. It's just pure husband and wife in their own language. Like, listen, y'all, I don't know if y'all have listened to my show, but my husband is hood. <laughs> my husband is hood. There is no thee, thou, though. He'd be like, listen, God, listen here. And you know, that to me is like, yes, because he has been his own authentic self, the person who God created him to be. And God knows how he communicates. So it doesn't surprise God when he'd be like, yo, bro, what happened? Like, that's their talk. That's their communication. And so he feels comfortable now praying for me, praying for our sons out loud, because I've, I've put, I've, I've created an atmosphere for him and no pastor, no preacher, no brother, nobody can outpray my husband when it comes to this household. And that's how we do it in the Smith household. My husband prays the way he want to pray and God moves the way God's supposed to move. So let set your husbands free. Stop putting all that, that extra weight on him because that also can interfere with your fertility. If he's stressed out because he can't, he don't feel like he's meeting your standards, that's gonna lower his sperm count. He's not gonna wanna have sex with you. He's gonna be irritated with you. He's gonna feel like he can't compare to whomever. And if your husband doesn't feel like he's the man, it's going to cause issues all the way around. That's so good. Um, and a lot of people are asking, is this being recorded? Because it was so good. Yes, this is being recorded. Um, and I'll probably put it um, on YouTube or I'll send the link to the Zoom out. Um, that This is all great stuff. So I hope y'all are catching 
all these nuggets that Coach Keisha is dropping. Um, and one thing that she mentioned that I want to reinforce is that whenever he feels stressed out or feels like he's not enough, that absolutely affects his fertility. Um, and so keeping him as stress-free as possible. I mean, not, of course, not negating your own situation, but doing both, like being um, sensitive to know that his fertility can be um, yeah. affected by stress as well. And knowing that once he does step up and make that prayer. So we talked about boosting him up and making him know that, you know, men need an ego boost. So yeah. don't let any, don't let anybody try to tell you that I don't want to be with no man. If I got to boost them up, well, that's what you signed up for when you got married. You that's do what need you to sign up for. <laughs> that's you what you, to... you signed up. You little do you know, that's what you signed up for first over love. Right. He... There was something that you did for him that boosted him up to add to, to uh, persuade him to want to marry you. There's something that you boosted up, boo. It, it means what? No, your cuteness. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it really wasn't like men are men's egos and their um, desires um, to be the affirmation. That's what pulls men into wanting to be with their with their spouse and wanting to be with a woman. And a lot of people think, oh, it's because I'm cute. I'm this girl, the big butt, all that stuff. It it just dissolves <laughs> after a while, you know, and you have to maintain um your integrity of why you married this man and your integrity is to make sure he feels like he can talk to you about anything and that he's safe when it comes to you there's no comparison there's no um you know pastor preacher friend cousin daddy because that was me my dad was my everything y'all and I was like the good, and this is funny, the good and the bad about my dad is what I wanted my husband to be until I got set free from that. And um, one one thing that just came to mind as um, Coach Isha was talking is so that he's not comparing himself to your pastor or even to you. So mm -hmm. remember that just because, and, and I'm gonna give y'all an example. <laughs> And I'm guilty of this. So I remember one time my husband was praying and like, it was one specific decree or declare thing we were declaring, right? We were doing them and like, he forgot one part. And so I was like, and then Lord, he had said, amen. And I was like, and Lord, don't forget. And I had added one part in. <laughs> and Girl, you like, ruined it. So my prayer wasn't good enough. And I was like, oh, but you just, and so I'm just giving that example because at that moment, I thought that I was, you know, being a help and helping him remember, but it made him feel like it negated his whole prayer and that it wasn't good enough because I had to add something else to it. So guess what? I could have saved that to my personal prayer time if I really felt like, oh my God, I need to say it. I really need to say this to God. Like I didn't have to say it in that moment. So yeah. choose your battles and remember, don't try to um, upstage him in your prayers or add your little two cents on. If you're letting him lead in that moment or he decides that he wants to pray, don't try to throw in your two cents too. let him have that moment, especially if you ain't never got him to pray before and he's finally praying. And now you try yeah. to do, you try to add your little something on the end because well, well, I don't know for whatever reason. And so for me, I, I literally did that. And then afterwards I was like, what was I thinking? Like, <laughs> what was I doing? I just had yeah. to say something else. Like, why didn't I just let it be? And so right. just remember that you don't have to add anything else to what he says, especially if you finally got him to, you yeah. know, don't, don't make sure you praise him, but then don't like try to like add whatever else you feel like. If you want to pray, go first, let him yeah. go how are you going to do it? But just make sure you um, are sensitive and let God lead you to not um, make him feel less than by yeah. adding to it when it doesn't really need to at that, yeah. at that particular moment. Yeah. And you know, another tip that I did, I did with um, Pablo Michelle, it's like during the week, I would say, this is what I need you to pray for when it comes to me. So I told him, like mm. I, I'm, I'm really big. I'm, and I'm just getting through this, um, 
in my life is the assumption. Stop assuming stuff. Stop, assume, stop assuming that they should know how you feel or what you need prayer about or anything. And that's with anybody. So like, I just, I took the burden off him. Listen, if you're praying for me, this is what I need you to pray for. So then when he comes to pray, he's praying what you asked. Mm. I mean, literally the Bible says you have not because you asked not. So I ask him, can you please pray for me when it comes to patience? Can you, pray, you know, please pray for me when it comes to, you know, dealing with A, B, or C. And I'll tell him that earlier during the week, you know, and then when we have our prayer time on Mondays, Lord, can you please help my wife when it comes to patience? She's been asking you. So I'm, I don't already told him. So now he's, but it makes him feel good because he's, it's given him a whole seven days to pray for me. So when he comes on that six days, when he come on that seventh day to pray, he's confident. Like I've been praying for her for patience. So now I can actually put it in words and she knows that I've been praying for her. Right. Okay. That That's so good. That's so good. Giving him a heads up. So that way he's not on the spot. Like, uh, no. like he's had prepare. That's so good. Yeah. Okay. Well, it is 830 and we want to start wrapping it up. I just want to give you guys an opportunity to ask questions in regard to anything that we have discussed tonight about you know, having your weekly meetings with your husband, because when you're dealing on this fertility journey, there's so many things to discuss. It could be new changes you want him to implement. Ashley says, no, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's so many new things that you want to implement in your journey. Yeah. You might start taking supplements or you might want him to start exercising or, hey, you, can you cut back on drinking? You know, whatever it might be, know that one, one, like Coach Keisha said, don't try to throw a list of 15 yeah. things he needs to do in one in your first meeting. Take it slowly so yes. he can be successful at one thing and then move on to the next. So does that mean that maybe your timeline of when you start trying maybe push back because you got to give him time to catch up? It might mean that. And so you have to accept what that looks like and be honest. And then also if you're going hard, but your husband's doing nothing, please recognize that your journey has not truly started until he's on board. And so, so many people um, don't acknowledge the power of you two being on one accord. Like the Bible says, where two are gathered, like um, God is in the midst and he hears you. So when you two come on one accord in this, it can ele elevate things to a whole new level. And so there's so many outsiders who don't understand what you're going through. Don't let your husband be another outsider who doesn't understand what you're going through. Yeah. Make sure that you invite him into the journey and sh tell him, show him what you need. Yeah. Show him he can support you. Don't be alone in your own home because you are assuming what your husband may say or may not want to do. Give it a try. One small yeah. thing. And this can make a huge difference on your journey when you feel supported. So, um, yeah, that that's my summary. Uh, but I want to make sure if anyone has any questions, I'm going to give you about one minute. You got to drop your questions in the chat. Uh, Joy said, this has been amazing and thought provoking. Serious gems were dropped tonight. Thank you. Or you're welcome, Joy. Coach Keisha is the truth. Anyone else have any comments, any questions on your marriage um, in this fertility journey or anything that you want to ask Coach Keisha about, you know, breaking generational trauma and how that may affect your journey? Um, I'm going to give you all about 30 more seconds before we close out and we'll pray out. But uh, let me see. I just want to shout out those who are here. I saw Taquisha. I saw B earlier, Arlisha, Ashanti, Ashley, two Ashleys, Claire, Frida, Joy, Kathy, Katrina, and Charlene. And I know there's a few others that I probably missed. So thank you all so much for coming in tonight. Um, Keisha, do you have any words before I pray out? Um, yeah, the only thing I want to say, Michelle, um, is that you ladies are doing an amazing job. 
And don't take that lightly. Just you joining a group, just you talking about your infertility, don't take that lightly. Give yourself a pat on the back. Give yourself, celebrate your small wins. You know, don't look for the baby to be your win. Look for the changes in you, the changes in your marriage, um, your thought changes, you know, anything that changes that makes you a better person. If you smile at yourself a little bit better, give yourself, congratulate yourself and give yourself on the pat on the back for the small wins because those small wins lead to the baby in your arm in 10 months. It starts there because if you, if you can't celebrate you, you, you know, it's going to be hard for your husband and, and, and your body to line up to what it is that you're wanting because your body, your body's going to do whatever it is that you allow it to do. So celebrate yourselves and love on each other. Keep supporting each other. Um, do whatever you need to do to make yourself happy first. Then the journey to everything else will come together. So I thank you. I really do. I appreciate you ladies. Allow me in your space. Thank you so much. And Coach Keisha, can you tell them how to contact you? And if you could uh, drop it in the chat, uh, how they can contact you, if they need to talk to you further, if they want to book a session with you, if they want to, um, or also your social media, if they want to listen to your show, can you drop that? Talk, tell it to them and drop it. Okay. okay. So you can, you can um, email me at contact at doinglifewithkeisha.com. So that's, that, that is my life coaching business, Doing Life with Keisha. Again, we work with women, uh, married women who deal with generational trauma. But we also work with single women as well because you're going to be single, you're going to be married one day, and you need to allow yourself to be set free before you bring all that junk into a marriage. So we, we, uh, we work with these ladies. Um, so that they can be free before they even get married and get free in their marriage. Because that's how I did it. I got free. I was a full-time mom, y'all. And I'm dealing with generational mess. Um, so that's how you can contact me for my life coaching business. My my radio show is, um, I typed so slow, so I'm sorry. So I tell you first and I type it. It's called, um, This Is How We Do It. And that's uh, my husband, Coach Pablo, and I, we do a show again about how we do things in our marriage how we um, dropped all of the naysayers. We dropped how people say things are supposed to be in a marriage. And we just talk about our 23 years of being married, how we overcame bankruptcy, um, generational trauma, in-laws, finances, communication, children, whatever comes in a marriage, we talk about it and we talk about it. Um, so that's our show is every Thursday at 5.30 p.m., on um, wdrbmedia.com. I'll put that in the chat in just a second because I can't talk and type at the same time. Um, so I put that in. And then my husband, if, if your husband or your significant other is dealing with abandonment issues from their father, um, my husband was abandoned by his father when he was six years old. He's never seen him after the age of six. So um, he created a safe space for men who have dealt with the same thing and now their fathers, how can they be the best father that God created them to be when they never had an example? So um, his business is called Because I'm a Dad, um, and they specialize, again, in men, in men who have abandonment issues and um, helping them to become the father that theirs was not. So I'll leave all of my contact information down in the chat. I would love to work with anybody, um, any of you ladies who are dealing with generational trauma or who want to come on our radio show, radio show, you have a question, we answer all questions, we dig down into the deep, but we have so much fun because marriage has been such a burden for so long and we need to let you know, yep, do I want to divorce them sometimes? Absolutely, yes, <laughs> but I love them too much. We've been through too much. And we know that we can overcome anything once we come together on one accord and do it our way. So that's why we have our show. This is how we do it. Thank you so much. And whenever I email, email out this replay, I'll make sure I have links to all of your, uh, your radio show, your email and your um, social media. I'll make sure I have all that in the email as well. Um, so perfect. Thank you. Um, pray out.
Um, if no one had any other questions or prayer requests, then we'll just go ahead and pray out. Um, so dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this moment in time. Thank you for the anointing on Coach Keisha's life. Thank you for her open and sharing with us how they do it, Lord. Thank you for her giving us tips and, and motivation and practical things. Um, steps that we can take away and implement in our marriages. Lord, we just thank you that every marriage that is on the rocks right now, every marriage where things are difficult, Lord, if it be your will, and we believe that it is, God, that you are taking the time to soften the hearts of our husbands, soften our hearts, Lord, help us to um, get rid of our offense, help us to draw closer to you in these times and these moments, Lord, show us how um, we need to be in order to be in the proper position and the proper place to receive um, our miracle babies, God, I thank you for the bodies of every um, couple that is represented on this call, Lord. I thank you that you are supernaturally flowing in our emotions and in our physical bodies, that healing is taking place. Over the next seven days, God, cultiv cultivate a culture in their homes where conversations can happen continually, Lord. Thank you that you are cultivating a culture in our homes where conversations can happen continually, that open conversations are not something that we are afraid of, that we're not scared to bring things to our husbands, God. Help us to have the strength that we need to talk to them no matter how we're feeling, Lord, help us to have the strength that we need to work together through all the hard times and through all the good times, Lord. Thank you, God, that you are not only uh, anointing us for this moment, but anointing us as couples for these moments, God. I thank you for our Leisha, Lord, and everything that she is bringing to the table, everything, every burden, every heavy weight that she carries, God. I thank you that you are releasing it, Lord, and letting her know that she can cast her cares on you in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for our Shanti, God, that you are giving peace to her mind, peace that passes all understanding. I thank you for Ashley Frederick, Lord. I thank you, God, that you are giving her um, the steps and guiding her footsteps on the right path so that as she is walking through this journey, she'll know exactly what she needs to do, who she needs to talk with, and who she needs to avoid. I thank you, Lord, that you continue to make Ashley Whittle the encourager that her husband needs. Help her to push him in the right direction with love, God. I thank you for Claire. I thank you for the cleansing heart that you have given Claire, God. I thank you for the clarity that she will receive because of what she is dealing with, God. I thank you that the clarity she will receive I thank you for the clarity that she will receive with what she is dealing with, Lord. Use her. Help her to bring clarity to others, God. I thank you right now for Frida. Lord, whatever confusion she is dealing with, Lord, make it plain, make it clear in Jesus' name. God, I thank you for joy. Whatever frustration she is dealing with, God, help to bring peace to that circumstance, God. I thank you that Kathy, she is continues to be the encourager that she is and motivates people who are walking through whatever you have called her to walk them through, God. I thank you for Katrina. Fresh start, new beginnings, Lord. I thank you that you are nurturing her with a fresh start and new beginning, Lord. Help her to achieve and do everything that she has been called to do and to not worry, to not fear, because you got her. Your hand is protecting her right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for Rachel, God, that she is doing all that she can, that she is um, doing the work that you have called her to do, Lord, that she does not grow weary in well-doing. God, I thank you for Shirlene. I, th mm. I thank you that she continues to go, Lord. I just saw like a train, Shirlene. I just saw like a train on, on a railroad track. I don't even know. Just keep going. Keep going. Your direction, your path has already been made. You just need to keep going. Go the direction that God has already told you to go. You're going the right direction. I see like a train and you're on a, like a train. I just saw a train and train track. So that's, I, that's all I heard. So seek God about what that means for you. All right. But I just thank you, God, that you are anointing every couple in here every couple that's represented, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you how you are moving. We thank you that you are functioning in our lives and that we can see it and feel it. Everything you said, every promise you made, we're holding you to it, God, and we can't wait to see what you're gonna do in our lives. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. All right. Well, thank y'all so much for being on here tonight. Thank you again, Coach Keisha, for uh, pouring your heart out and your knowledge with us. And I will send this replay out so everyone can watch it again and again and get all the nuggets. And please reach out to Coach Keisha because she has so much things that I believe you all could benefit for from on your journey. Y'all have a great night. I'll see you next first Thursday. Bye.